Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Science. Yeah, so I wanted to do a, a test. I've got a super flat taiga world here and you might ask yourself, how do I do that? Well, let me show you. You won't, won't ask yourself in that particular tone of voice, but uh, so we can just come up with a, you know, test. super flat right so going to do testing so we want to be in creative more world options generate structures i don't care to allow cheats on world type i'll go to super flat and then customize and the cool thing is you know you got all these presets here right so we can come up and say oh classic flat well here's the here's the awesome thing um we don't really need so this we could use this as a starting point and and if we scroll back here, here's the full string. And and this is um there's this is documented on the wiki, but it's not super clear. Uh so this is uh basically it's four different fields separated by semicolon. So the first field is a version number, so they're all version three. Uh that so that one doesn't entirely matter. And then it's a string of of uh showing you what the blocks are from the bottom up. So you have a, a layer of bedrock two layers of dirt and a layer of grass and that's fine and then oops and then here we have the biome that it will be and then any any sort of special features and there's a whole list of those special features but we don't need that but if we come here and we say we select say five which is the biome id for a taiga we can come here and say use preset and it will so we'll generate this, you know, one layer of bedrock, blah, blah, blah. And if you want, you can, you can go and add more layers of dirt if you want. Um, C doesn't matter for a super flat. And then I say done. And I say create new world. And it's going to create this big world with grass. If I pull up the F3, notice the top biome is taiga. It's pretty cool. So if you're testing, if you want to test to see if certain things happen in a taiga biome that might be very handy so kind of like what i did here so i wanted to test freezing of water in a taiga biome so i built some stuff here and uh you can ignore a lot of this for the moment some of that stuff down there we'll get down to that but i built i wanted to test and see at what layer do things freeze and i built this uh, a couple command blocks here that place and remove this big old cover because the cover uh, prevents ice from forming and so here's what I want to do I want to show you a couple things so I'm going to uncover this boop and it all goes away and I got one up here and notice it starts to freeze right away and then come down and and we can see that it starts freezing uh, pretty much all at the same rate Ice freezing is not subject to the random tick speed, unfortunately. So uh, you can't speed this up. I'm not going to sit here and watch it all freeze. Um, I may, if I stay and record that much, I may fast forward or, or cut to the end of it. But you can see up here that at the very top, we've got three blocks of ice. And down here, we've got a bunch more than that. So... The higher up you go, it doesn't mean it freezes faster. There's a lot of randomness. And these are special cases, which I'll talk about in a moment. But first, I wanted to determine, because I thought I had seen numbers for it, but I wanted to determine at what level does ice water start freezing in a taiga biome, because it's not all the way down to uh, sea level like it is in, say, an ice spikes biome or whatever. So if we come up here and we turn on the snow, whoops, toggle, downfall, boop, snow. And basically water will freeze at a point where snow falls. And if we go below this point, oh, it's gonna make a liar out of me. You see there's, there's some spots here where it's raining. Let's see, I saw it, I did see some, I promise. That there's just a tiny little bit right there, a bit of rain. And if you go up, it turns into snow. And the, the, bear, the boundary seems to be about 140, uh, Y140, which I'm at 
just a little bit above here. So that is our, so, ba so basically below that you get sporadic snow and, and rain, and you'll actually get the snow, the snow will accumulate in spots here where it's snowing and it will not accumulate where it's raining. And if you go down far enough, it all turns to rain. So for my ice tray in the taiga biome, I'm going to have to go uh, build up to about Y140. Don't need to go higher than that. And that's uh, that was useful to know. So oh, the snowfall is super pretty. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, so what about these guys here? These are all eight by eight trays. They're all the same size. They are not underneath others. The edge here is underneath this just to make it as compact as possible, but not the actual water itself. So it's freezing all the way to the edge. So each of these has 64 blocks of water. And what I wanted to do, and I did this on the last season of Minecraft land party where I put in uh, on pistons, but I put in little uh, seed, what I call seed blocks that pop up and give more places for the ice to form. Because when you have ice, when you have water, it needs to be next to a non water block in order to freeze. So, so these are all freezing in from the edges and these this one with four and this one with 12 seed blocks have more spots to freeze. And then once the water gets, then once the ice starts forming there, it can, it can freeze off along the ice as well. But what I found was surprising. Uh, the downside of this is that I've got 64 blocks of water, but I'm taking up 12 of them with snow blocks. Now I could, I decided uh, so that's 12 less than 64 that are actually going to be harvestable as ice. And that seemed like uh, I was hoping that this would speed up the freezing process to the point where I could re essentially refill the pond more quickly uh, enough that losing the 12 blocks of ice didn't matter and then come down here. And, and so, and honestly, these blocks along the edge, so I have three, four, four, five of them uh, were unnecessary. And I looked at it and I said, well, you know what? If I just took these four and centered them, that might provide enough of a seed. And it does. It does help up the initial speeding, seeding. Uh, it speeds up the initial freezing. But the problem is that these guys down here, this one's going particularly slowly. So it's going to lose the race. But if we come down here, once it starts freezing in from the outside, it kind of seeds the middle of the water all by itself with harvestable ice. So unfortunately, what ends up happening, if we let this go long enough and do it enough times, what we'll find is the randomness of the way the ice freezes. These guys will end up still having unfrozen water at about the same time rate at which these guys have unfrozen water so it'll get down to the point where you know like each of them has two or three unfrozen blocks and the the entirety of these do not freeze up significantly faster than the ones without any of the seed blocks so that was a little uh, disappointing to me but it's also useful to know that as long as you have solid blocks around the the edges it doesn't matter uh, it'll end up it'll end up freezing no problem now this one actually is freezing pretty quickly here oh, that was interesting why is the sky going dark there that's really weird so right now we got one two three four five six seven eight nine now that's eight one two three four five six seven eight and he's going slowly this one here is and it's random you get you get this randomness so uh, at this point, these guys are freezing up faster, but when it gets down to the point where they have like three or four or two blocks, it, they, they, it ends up being, um, these guys end up slowing down. So it ends up being a total horse race and they end up all ending up freezing at about the same time. Not quite sure why I don't understand, but that's, uh, that's the conclusion I came to here. Um, so 
And initially I was thinking that this was going to be the best design. And again, in this particular instance, it's freezing up first where it looks like it's going to win the race. I promise you it won't. Or if it does, it will just barely freeze up first. Um, let's go look down here. And while I was trying to figure out what would, what was the best way of, of getting the seed blocks in place in such a way that it would, they would not get in the way of harvesting or refilling. I came up with this. So this has covered water along the edge that will never freeze. It's covered by half slabs. And then I just put a little block down here with um, redstone torches underneath four. So a two by two block here, redstone torches and uh, sticky pistons pushing up underneath. And that works, but it turns out to be unnecessary. Uh, so then I was playing around. Oh, you didn't see that. So I was playing around here. I wanted to build this, as I think I mentioned. I want to build it so that the uh, the ice farm on the server is a uh, 16 by 16. It's like a full chunk. So I built a couple 16 by 16s here. But then I have to. Then I started to, to work on. Okay, how do I get the water around the edges so that it'll refill? This one is not filling right now because I left some ice in place. And I wanted to test a couple different things. And let's check in on these. See, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And he's only got three left. So he's going pretty quick. And he's got four left. But see how this guy's catching up? The slower ones are catching up. And they will catch up. And it'll take longer and longer for the last few of these to freeze up. They may win by just a hair, but I've run this as a test multiple times now, and they do not win um, significantly more of the time than the others. And I've done that by testing, by basically figuring that um, if they were gonna freeze up faster, they should freeze up faster than at least three of the others, and they don't. Um, maybe my logic is a bit flawed, but so while we're doing speed tests, let me show you this. So I've got, uh, I've got here, so this, I've got pistons along the side, holding back water, right? Water that's covered by half slabs, so it won't freeze. I've got a water in the corner here, which turned out to be kind of crucial, otherwise these two won't form source a source block here um, and yeah because they're flowing here uh, so that and this is necessary to make a source block on top of this piston when it uh, when it retracts so let's do this I'm gonna give this one the handicap because I have to go do a couple things uh, I can't make them both go simultaneously, but if I fill this, if I fill these with, with air, boop, the water rushes in and I go hit this switch as quickly as I can, boop, so they're at least close. This one has a little bit of a head start. So he's got a, a block freezing already. These are both at 140, so they're basically, I think they're at 140. Close enough. They're at essentially the level I intend to build. Um, I'm at 146, so a little bit higher than 140. That's fine. So now he's got three blocks, four blocks, and he's just getting started with one. Oh, and I forgot I have to, oops, put the pistons back. That's an important part. Actually, that's super important. So on the test block on this test guy down here, I just put source blocks around two of the edges and left them covered so they wouldn't freeze up. The source blocks wouldn't freeze. Um, here, I put same thing here. So I've just got source blocks underneath uh, half slabs along two sides. So when I harvest the ice, the water from there flows back in and, and refills. Here, 
I put the source blocks are one block farther back and I put a piston in the way to hold the water so that I can harvest the whole thing and then refill when I want to. But notice something, and this should be super obvious, but or it should have been super obvious to me, but I wanted to I wanted to test it to make sure. If we count the number of blocks, remember this guy had a head start, and this was handicapped because I didn't put up the pistons back right away. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, twenty, about twenty-four, twenty-five. Um, so this guy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This guy's got more ice already. And the reason for that is, if you'll notice, he only starts freezing along the two sides that are next to solid blocks. Duh, because water needs a non-water block to, uh, that was kind of weird. Did you see that? Hmm. Fortunately, the extended piston heads count as a non-water block to see the ice freezing. So if this freezes in from all four sides, whereas this freezes over from two sides, meaning this guy freezes up faster than that one. Uh, let's go see how these are doing. Okay, he's completely frozen over. He's still got two. He's only got four. He's only got three. He's only got two. See what I mean? The others kind of catch up. He's only got one. So in this case, this guy won in this instance. Um, but you see that having more seed blocks doesn't guarantee that it'll freeze over faster. So having the seed blocks only slows down efficiency because you have fewer harvestable blocks on the back end. So when this does all freeze up, I will only get, what, 64 minus 12, so 52 uh, ice out of this one. And this one is only four, so I'm gonna get 60 ice. But all these others, I just have to wait a little bit longer and I would get 64, get a full stack out of each. Whereas these two, when they completely freeze up, I'll get four stacks. There's one other thing I wanted to try. Um, I put trap doors here so that when this was empty, I would have a way of being able to jump in out and out of it because the trap door doesn't have a um, collision hitbox. Uh, it doesn't count as a block. And although I kind of do step up and over it, you can jump from one block below onto it. Um, where there's water in here, you can swim up and out and jump out. That's not a problem. But I didn't want to get into a spot where I harvest all the ice and I couldn't get out of the pit without maybe using an ender crystal or something. And I didn't want to put a ladder. That was weird. Saw it again. I don't have too much light over here that I have blocks that are freezing and rethawing, do I? These torches are positioned such that they're. When we get over to the block of water, the light is eight. So it should be fine. Um, beasties won't spawn on the ice or in the water. They won't spawn on the glass or the half slab. So everything should be fine. This should provide enough light up here. And I could even get rid of these torches. But initially I had stone blocks there. Um, so one other thing I wanted to try uh, do, 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 do. put this there and let's go uh, let me get a flint and steel I want to test and see if trapdoors burn uh, fences will fence gates will but I don't know if trapdoors will so let's get down here where it doesn't matter so much Ooh. oh and this is me playing with two different ways of getting the row 16 pistons to to trigger and trigger all at the same time um, it's difficult because redstone will only go 15 um, and then so 
And unfortunately, because I can't run the, the redstone on top of the pistons, because here they're below and above, they have water running next to them. So I have to power the blocks next to them, which means a lot of repeaters, which isn't that big of a deal, but I just don't, I just don't like it. So to get all of them to light up, I have to do this little two repeater tango here to, to power up this guy. And then of course this would go over and power the other side. Uh, so this one I came up with is a little cheaper. It's less pretty looking from above, but if I can run the redstone on top of the blocks next to the, the pistons by putting them facing down, it works. And I do the same little, little tango here. Um, so I don't know which one I'm going to use. I, I built this one here with the pistons facing down just to see what would be involved. And as I said, it's cheaper. It's a little simpler. Oh, example. If I'm here down here, I can't get out here. But if I come up to one of the trap doors here, I can. So that works. So the question is... Ha <laughs> ha. Um... So the question is, if I place the trapdoor down on the ground here and ignite the grass around it, will the trapdoor burn? As I said, fence gates will. And I have a problem where in the, uh, the nether farm, the blazes keep shooting the fence gates and uh, burning them down. Doesn't look like it, does it? Can I? Oh, look at that. If I try to set it on fire, if I hold down shift and right click on it, it sets a fire on it and then it immediately goes out. So I think that these will be a good alternative to fence gates and they will not burn. That's very cool. So we learned two things today. Well, more than two. Trapdoors don't burn. Um, if you don't want to build a bunch of repeaters, it's better to have the pistons facing down. Um, you need to have freezable, you need to have solid sides or non-water sides on all four sides of your ice tray in order to speed or get the ice to freeze up as quickly as possible. And He's all frozen up. One, one. Oh, they're all getting close. One. He's all frozen. He's still got one. So having more seed blocks inside the water to get the water to freeze up doesn't actually speed up freezing of all of the water, and it simply slows down your harvest rate. So there we go. That's what I've learned. Um, I think that covers all the useful stuff but that was it oh let me you can come down here and show you with the the pistons pointing down boop it all flows in like that now the water won't freeze down here so it's not i can't use this for uh to test the freezing but that's the way it works and again the water will freeze against these extended piston heads, which is awesome. So there we go. Uh, hope you found that interesting. Um, I, I certainly found it interesting learning about how all this stuff works. Um, and yeah, you can see half of this still hasn't frozen and most of this has. So, um, and I'm exaggerating, but uh, I mean, it's, it's clear that this, this one's gonna freeze up faster than this. And I've run it multiple times, and that's it ends up being the case. So, oh, this guy froze up. But notice I've got four down here that are completely frozen, and this one up here that are completely frozen. And so this is the loser of this particular race, but this guy just barely froze up before him and maybe one of the others. So it's not really a uh, useful... Um, it's not a useful thing to put any kind of seed block inside to help 
speed up the freezing of the water from the inside out. It seems like it should be a good idea, but it ends up not helping enough to compensate for the blocks that you lose. Boop. There's my cover. Now I can reset it all. I set up these 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 chainable command blocks. They're really cool. Um, you can come here and have it. Basically, I have one for each of the pans of water to refill it with water. I'm not going to click on it because this one and this one, I'll lose my seed blocks. But um, I think that's pretty cool. So, so anyway, there we go. They basically, they do the same thing as this. So they get water in each of them and I can rerun the uh, test. So there we go. Uh, so I will use that knowledge in order to build my ice farm on Minecraft land party server. I know that I can build it at about this height and uh, build it with pistons around two sides so that I can make sure that I get uh, freezable water around all four sides while it's freezing and uh, and not to worry about going too crazy with building contraptions to have pistons push up seed blocks because it, it doesn't really help. There you go. Um, so there you go. Hope you learned something. Um, I know I did. And uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye.